A very good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this 93rd edition of the Together for Education webinars brought to you by Morco. For over a year now, we have been organizing this series of webinars. A year ago, we were dealing with a new, new thing called the pandemic. We were still finding out information about it. We were not very clear on what exactly was going on. But we all knew that the school education system was shutting down as we knew it. And we quickly had to adopt new methods to ensure that the learning of our young students were not hampered. Online education came to the fore. And we at Notebook decided to set up this series of webinars so that our educators could get a more hands-on experience of this new learning platform called Zoom that was quickly coming up. Little did we know that more than a year later, not much would have changed. Today, we are looking at the second wave, a set of occurrences around the country that doctors are still trying to explain, new symptoms, and the need for safety and security is just as prevalent today as it was a year back. I hope, I hope all of you and your loved ones are staying safe and healthy and staying home during this time. Over this last year, we have discussed a number of topics, ranging from extremely curricular to co-curricular to processes, even topics like mental health have been discussed. Today, we look at something that every student is finally expected to develop, leadership capabilities. We are looking at how our education system nurtures leadership. Our first speaker today is Mr. Philip Barrett. Mr. Barrett retired as the deputy headmaster from the illustrious Doon School in Dehradun after 44 years of serving in education. He served the Doon School as housemaster, head of department, dean of activities, dean of student welfare, deputy headmaster, second master, and acting headmaster with great distinction. He also carried out a visioning exercise for the Doon School in the year 2011 through an in-depth study of a number of British public schools and various schools in the US. Mr. Barrett qualified as a leadership trainer at Wellington College, UK in the year 2000. He is also an athlete, an adventurer, and a naturalist. We at Notebook are also privileged to have him as a senior advisor. Sir, privileged to have you with us. Over to you. Thank you very much, Bayou. I hope I am audible and visible enough. Yes, sir. Loud and clear. Yeah. yeah, there's a lot of storming and raining outside, so there are going to be connectivity issues, I'm sure. Uh, a very good evening to you, Achan, Meghna, Abhishek, and all the, the family of, um, uh, of Notebook back in Calcutta. Uh, also, very good evening to our esteemed panelists. Um, warm welcome to Mrs. Devedi and uh, Mr. Sandeep Day. Um, Mr. Uh, Arjun Rao, I think, is also here. Uh, lovely to see them. And also to the people who have tuned in this afternoon. Uh, the question, of course, is can leadership be taught? Uh, are leaders born? Uh, do all of us have to be leaders? Uh, there are no short answers to these questions, but I'll try and give you my take on these questions. Yes, I think we're all called to be leaders in some way or the other, uh, leading our families, our teams, our clubs, our offices, our corporations, uh, states, countries. Uh, if nothing else, we are called to lead ourselves. Um, although some are innately better leaders than others, natural leaders, I think all of us can learn the skills of leadership and get better at it. Um, as you mentioned, Sabayu, I did a 10-day course at Wellington in England, and this course was conducted by retired SAS soldiers. Uh, a lot can be learned from the special forces because um, whatever, I, whatever little I knew on leadership till then, uh, you know, I again brushed up at Inmi, the company I worked for in 2015. And uh, I shared some of these skills with the students I came in touch with. So you can learn and become better even if you're not a natural leader. Students rate leadership as a very, very important trait in the teachers that they uh, find their favorites, along with traits like kindness and patience and such other things. But I think students look up to teachers who have innate leadership, uh, skills at leadership. And this they see when they go on trips or you know, when they see their teachers booking hotel travel, uh, travel arrangements, ordering food, catching trains or flights. Just by observing their teachers, they learn so much about leadership. Now, 
there's a lot of misconceptions around this concept of leadership. Uh, a lot of children think it's about bossing and controlling others and, and ordering people about. Uh, it's also about status and privileges, uh, not so much about service and you know, responsibility. And it's up to us to actually correct these misconceptions. Uh, and much of this comes from the way they see the leaders around them and how leaders acquire power and money and think that's it. Briefly defined, leadership is about seeing the good, the talents, the skills in others and making them better. Polishing the gold in others. Leaders must know their people and make, they must know the skills and the talents that they have and to challenge and support these uh, to do better. And, um, you know, no, as I said, a lot of leadership I learned from the special forces and because they will never leave a man behind. They will give up their lives for others. And I think it's all about putting yourself before others. Uh, so different from many of our political leaders who abandon the ship when the going gets tough or when the financial crisis hit. Just see what the Lehman brothers did. They jumped the boat. I think leadership is very different from managing. While management is important, leadership is something quite different. I think managers, they, they, they lead to happy places. They lead to satisfied you know, customers. They don't rock the boat. They keep things going well and smoothly. They want to order and they want to keep things just the way they were. Whereas leaders tend to churn up things. They ask difficult questions. They turn things on their head. They bring about change. They cause a lot of confusion. Uh, and they often get assassinated or crucified or you know, thing burnt at the stake. Um, I think it's about setting a new path, seeing new ways of doing things, taking risks, becoming unpopular in doing so, losing friends, and in the end, of course, respected. And while it's important to be good managers, uh, and uh, it's also important that to understand that leadership is not management. I think a good definition is that management is about doing things correctly, while leadership is about doing the correct thing. Now, if schools are places to teach children to prepare for tomorrow's world, then I think leadership must be taught just as life skills, value education, STEM, robotics, and artificial intelligence, all very important. Teachers, uh, teachers must teach children that there are different forms of leadership, you know, from the autocratic to the laissez-faire, to the democratic, to the inspirational, I won't touch on these, but I think it's important that we function from different type of leadership um, uh, you know, uh, platforms and that all are important. Yes, some of us have a preferred stance. Some of us are naturally demo, you know, despotic leaders and some of, them, some of us are very much more democratic. But I think it's important that we know our weaknesses, our strengths and learn to function between all this, the whole range. But I think before we teach children leadership, I think we've got to ask ourselves as school teachers and heads of schools, are we leading? You know, uh, I think a, a school is only as good as its principal or its leader. Um, and children are exposed to good leaderships, uh, good leadership from what they see happening in school. And uh, I think there are five different little forms of leadership that principals and heads of schools practice. I mean, from instructional leadership, which deals with focusing on how teachers teach. Uh, you know, uh, are the heads of schools working to improve teacher delivery? Are they well prepared? Are they correcting their work? Is the lessons planned? Do you follow the schedule? There's also transformational leadership, where heads of schools transform and change their teachers. Do they teach them, treat them with respect and kindness? Are they stakeholders in the schools and in the running of the school? Are heads preparing teachers to be heads of schools tomorrow? Or are they just wanting teachers to do as they were instructed? Then there's also constructivist leadership, which focuses on helping the learner process learning rather than just directing it. How can we help children direct their own learning? Um, I think the process of learning is as important as the, as the product, the result. And this is done by helping teachers to engage in research, critical thinking, higher order questioning, 
accepting alternative views, involving their children in discussion. And of course, the fourth would be servant leadership. And this children pick up very fast. As I said earlier, leadership is about serving others. You haven't come to be served. You are, are you listening? Are you empathetic? Are you encouraging? Are you serving the needs of the teacher? Are you re removing obstacles in the path? Are you, are you listening, healing? Are you aware? Are you sharing power? Are you giving credit publicly to teachers or are you hogging the credit? And of course, there's strategic leadership. It's all about the future. Are you goal setting? Are you looking ahead? Are you looking at different examinations? Are you holding difficult conversations? Are you handling the threat and the opposition from other stakeholders? Are you building school partnerships? These are all things that children pick up and see the, how their heads and principals are running schools. Now, coming back to how a school can nurture leadership in children, there are a few points. The first of all is by letting them know about real life stories. The Bombay 2611 massacre and how the Taj staff handled it is a story of, hero of great heroism. Uh, stories about, you know, like Bravo 2-0, mountain climbing, uh, climbers like Messner, sports heroes. A lot can be learned from Henry VIII, Macbeth, Julius Caesar, within the textbooks that they study. The other form of leadership is by, by, by example. Children learn, as I said earlier, by watching their teachers and their mentors, by discussion groups, talking about how do you handle un unpopularity, how do you handle friends when they fall off, doing the right thing even though you are despised for it, living with dissent, backbiting, loneliness. I think this has to be discussed. The fourth point would be getting outside experts, people who run workshops, to uh, come into school and do little training um, with classes. This would be on a one a month basis, once a fortnight basis. But I think it's important that children also get away to summer camps, adventure camps, away from mom and dad, because I think they learn best when they're in a new, uh, you know, new setting, away from the comfort zone. So getting people in to teach leadership skills. Also, I think by giving them real role plays, you know, appointing them prefects and monitors and captains, giving them real power and responsibility and letting them get on with the job, not breathing down their shoulders and instructing them and correcting them all the time, giving them real chances to be leaders. Also helping them to run teams, building trust, holding difficult conversations. You can't be a leader if you're not being a part of a team because it, eventually when you go out in the real world, you'll be running and leading teams. Now also calling people who to give guest talks. I remember in school, we had C Commander Abhilash Tobi, uh, who came in, who, who's the, the first Indian to circumnavigate uh, single-handedly um, you know, around the world. So he was a great inspirational uh, leader to our boys. And uh, so therefore, that's, that's an important thing. Giving children trust and tasks to carry out. At, at my school, the Dune School, we had you know, clubs and uh, you know, MUN and debates and everything was real power being given to children and so that they got on with the whole idea of planning, using skills, using whiteboards, using the fishtail diagram, actually seeing planning in action. Um, another way would be to bring in a lot of democracy into school, making students uh, stakeholders in the running of their school. By making students resilient, uh, letting them view failures as an opportunity, not as you know, failures. Kids must learn to think that they can succeed and not give up. I think resilience is an important thing. Also helping students to negotiate, stand their ground if they believe strongly in their, you know, in what they believe in. Now, I personally was very weak in this and Arjun Rao would bear me out. Even many years into my, into my career as a teacher, I found it very difficult to negotiate uh, for what I wanted. Uh, and this was because I had a father who didn't encourage uh, argument. And uh, I just wish my teachers had encouraged me to argue and hold my point. So I'm just making a point for my personal thing. Um, rewarding leadership behavior. So when children make decisions, 
uh, I think it's important to, you know, applaud them, reinforce this leadership initiative and not, you know, ridiculing them or making fun of something that went wrong. And also helping them to, and not assisting children uh, and not rescuing the child all the time uh, when he's in trouble or facing a problem. I think let, letting them handle their own problems and helping them to hone their own, uh, you know, um, reliability, I think that's very important. I want to end by a very short, um, uh, short little story. When I was at Doon, we had many great leaders. And the school has produced many, many great leaders in many fields. So there was obviously something the school that was doing, the school was doing correctly to have churned out so many well-known figures over a long period of time. And so there was this one illustrious old, old boy who was donating a large sum of money to the school. And I asked him, I said, what, is, what are some of the traits that have made you such a great leader? And I think he was uh, New York head of Goldman Sachs at one stage. And he turned to me and said, there were only two things I learned from school. One was this striving for excellence that was drilled into me for six years. This striving for excellence. And the second was this ability to serve others, to put others before myself. And this is what I have practiced all my life uh, for six years in school and so many years afterwards. And I think uh, with that, Sabayu, I must hand this over to you. I hope I have laid the platform for our illustrious panel to take it up. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, the Indian cricket team at some point had this passion that the captain was always one of the opening batsmen. Uh, today, sir, when the topic is leadership, thank you so much for opening for us. I think that was a great headway into this topic. The next speaker, ladies and gentlemen, is Ochin Bhattacharya. Ochin is the founder and CEO at Notebook. A chartered accountant by training, Ochin was a director at Deloitte prior to starting Notebook. He has worked in India and abroad in various senior capacities in GE, PwC, KPMG, and Deloitte. He is a fellow of the ICEI and a member of CP Australia. He is also the recipient of the prestigious Indian Achievers Award. Ochin is an avid reader and a passionate traveler with keen interests in economics, history, literature, and philosophy. He is a regular speaker at various forums and chambers of commerce and also contributes articles to numerous publications regularly. He is also on the board of some of the most renowned corporates and contributes significantly to their brand strategies. Ochin, over to you. Good evening, everyone. Shiva, am I audible? Yeah, Ochin, loud and clear. I once again welcome all of you to today's session on a topic which will, which has always been important and will most certainly be even in times to come. You know, it, it really takes a lion's heart to change the fate of, of a nation or say to lead a revolution or to create history. For instance, to leave a mark in scientific research or even to fly to the moon. So leadership to me is all encompassing. So the moment we hear the word leadership, the first thing naturally that comes to our mind is about our political leaders, which undoubtedly is very important in a democracy. But we also need leaders in every sphere of our life, be it scientific pursuits, be it medicine, like what we're witnessing right now, when probably we have seen the worst humanitarian crisis in our lifetimes. We need leaders in armed forces, in policing, in intellectual pursuits, in academics. So leadership definitely is a far more broader concept. Now, we have seen instances, we have seen instances of leaders you know, being able to transform, being able to change the course of history of a nation with their mental resolve, with their hard work, determination, passion, and infectious enthusiasm. And we have seen many such examples around the globe. History has shown time and again that ordinary people come forward and take extraordinary decisions. 
with courage, strength, and resolve. So much so that the next generation finds hope and direction. In their words, and because of their inspiration leadership, they don't give up. They really fight till the last. Time and again, we have seen nations facing such challenges. And we have seen, it, seen and we also read about the kind of boundless sacrifices. So whenever we hear the word leader, I think the first, first name that comes to my mind, and I'm sure that's the same with many, many of you in the audience, is that of the father of our nation, Mahatma Gandhi. A man in simple robe who really taught the entire world how nonviolence could fight the sturdiest of colonies in the world and uproot years of British imperialism. You know, the world actually believes that Gandhi led India to freedom. But if we look at the story, we'll also understand that how he inspired so many other nations. Just as Nelson Mandela or Martin Luther King, two very big proponents of Mahatma philosophy, indeed agreed on, on numerous occasions. In fact, during the Nobel Peace Prize ceremony in 1994, Nelson Mandela thanked Gandhi in his very own words saying, India is Mahatma's country of birth and South Africa his country of adoption. So such are the great feats of, of men who sacrifice their life for betterment of nations, generation and people of that time. Now, when we hear the word leadership, so what exactly is leadership? The Leadership Institute at Harvard defines leadership as the skill of motivating, guiding, and empowering a team. Now, please mark my words. Three very important words. Motivating, guiding, and empowering a team. Two words, a socially responsible vision. Now, the fundamental basis of leadership is to lead in a way that brings about positive change in people. Allowing them to follow wherever the leader needs them to go. So that unshakable faith, that belief. Now, over the years, many theories in leadership has been researched and studied. Like, in fact, birds are referred to some very important theories. Now, a few of them that I would just like to touch upon. Uh, one very important uh, debate in management circles across the academic corridors, B schools around the world is about two different approaches to leadership. One approach, which is the trait approach, which believes that leaders are born with certain uh, traits and qualities that, will make, that makes them successful. And the other approach, which is the behavioral approach, which argues that leadership qualities can be taught and developed. The third, there's another very interesting concept of contingency approach, which suggests that leadership styles are needed to match, the, match to the situation. Here the argument is that leaders like, like leopards cannot change their spots. Hence, the leadership style needs to suit the circumstances. So now why I refer to this is, it has been proved time and again, and there are studies around this, that it's not only about those inborn qualities that the trait approach suggests, but as, as I, when I started, what I refer to, that time and again, history has proved that ordinary people have come for, forward and shown extraordinary courage and resolve. So it's, it's also about the behavioral approach where leadership qualities can definitely be taught. It can definitely be nurtured. Now, there's another very important aspect of strategic leadership, which says that leaders are proactive. They set goals that everyone 
everyone in the team can understand and they use those goals to achieve their strategy now another very important aspect is the critical thinking skill so a successful leader one of his one of the essential elements which is you know very very important for success is the ability of a leader ability of leader to encourage constructive criticism to encourage team members to critically think and come up with come up with different kinds of divergent thought process which at times may challenge him but helps him to think now strategic leadership is all about encompassing the vision mission and strategy and structure of an organization now another very important aspect is uh, there are two different ways to lead one is transformational and the other is transactional now when most people are asked to describe the characteristics of a leader they typically describe very visible characteristics you know like charisma presence uh, ability to inspire motivate so these are all about transformational leadership the, the ability to lead major change which are very important there are another style of leadership which is the more which is called the transactional style of leadership transactional leaders and we see these two different styles in in all walks of life a uh, bit corporates a bit politics bit academic here we have always seen two, two different styles and the second style is transactional style style leadership so they are the more reserved lot who prefer to silently do good work and ensure that current standards are well maintained so they ensure stability of the ship so you know very very effective in mature stages so these are some very important aspects of leadership that i wanted to touch upon now coming to coming to the way in which leaders function like as birds are also referring again there can be different styles in which uh, leaders can communicate in which leaders can convince in which leaders can motivate inspire and take the entire team along once a style is directing which is more like a authoritative style you know specific instruction and close supervision which really doesn't work in today's age the the other style is coaching wherein specific instructions and supervision are provided but also clear explanations of why somebody is being asked to do something so the objective is to ensure that the team member actually connects or aligns with the vision which is very very important third style is supporting wherein the team member you know because i believe one of the one of the essential elements of leadership is to create more leaders is to empower team members is to make others believe that yes you can lead yes you have it in you i am here to facilitate you i am here to empower you i am here to make your life easier to remove your hurdles to remove your obstacles so third style is supporting wherein the job of leader is to support the team member is to give confidence to a uh, team member that yes actually you don't need me you are good enough and the next style the last one so we discussed about directing the more authoritative style then we touched upon coaching third we discussed about supporting and the fourth delegating when the leader completely delegates certain portions that okay this is an area that you are you are in charge you can take independent decisions and you you have my support now when you are discussing about qualities or traits we all agree that you know there are examples there are examples of leaders who did not take the easy path who didn't take shortcuts but who actually had a set of beliefs principles and they stuck to it so it's only the mental resolve that drives so qualities like dedication 
determination you know self confidence are some of, the, some of the most common attributes of a leader but how do we develop these attributes today we are discussing about nurturing leadership so how do we actually nurture it and especially at a formative stage so i remember i remember martin luther kings a very famous quote which is very apt we said our lives begin to end the day we become silent about things that matter so the fact is listening to your inner conscience listening to your inner voice believing in a set of principles and actually living by it it's important that one inculcates the notion of leadership in one self first before it can be shared with others unless until unless until someone unless until i believe in myself how and why will others believe in me so i believe self resolve definitely helps to build grit and it definitely speaks for an uncompromising and fearless attitude which i think is very very important to counter all hurdles in life life as you all know is not a bed of roses now coming to nurturing leadership in students so we would all agree that you know we need leaders in all spheres of life as we discussed so not only politics many leaders in business sports all spheres of life right so now studies say that some of the most important leadership skills that students need to develop i think start with school and there's no doubt about it that school and esteemed educators have a huge role to play in shaping up young minds considering the fact that they enjoy unquestionable trust and confidence from a student's perspective undoubtedly teachers are role models they hold them in very high esteem and the entire society in fact does so so for any student apart from parents the only role model that they look up to and regularly interact with is their esteemed teachers so how can school actually do it so i believe first and foremost activity is very very important from a student's perspective and from a school's perspective in terms of facilitating these activities be it various events joining a club volunteering for various initiatives participating in competitions joining student bodies i think very important now for years we have seen that schools have actually served as central points for grooming leadership and there's no doubt that students love to follow examples of great teachers as bart was also referring and there is some if, if you look at if you look at ways you know i was referring to some activities for instance group activities very very important the idea is to build confidence in group efforts to solve problems jointly learn to break barrier function in groups and yet hold on to personal resolve for better performance now i always believe that a collective game creates this kind of confidence and undoubtedly so be it, be it sports activities or competitions in various areas be it say impromptu debate or at risk skills uh, art music competitions now all of them have in their own ways inspired children to be innovative become trend setter and emerge as leaders in every corner of the world we would all agree that leadership is a mindset it's also about an attitude right it's it's much more than a philosophy and thus how do we how do we inculcate this attitude how do we build this mental resolve unless until we 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 nurture it and this kind of group activities uh our students are regularly encouraged to participate in them now i think if another another very important aspect is ethics very very important aspect so i believe that if we really want to if you really want to groom a child as a leader 
I think first it's very important to make him or her a good human being, full of full of qualities like compassion, integrity, honesty, courage, and self-respect. In addition, of course, the power of communication. Where they feel a strong urge to express their emotions, express their emotions decisively, and work hard, perhaps, without making any compromises. So I think, uh, and and most in today's age, if you see exactly what we are going through, I think there's no doubt about it that we we completely understand that. And 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 especially, we completely understand that in each walk of life, we do need, we do need exceptional leadership qualities, and ethics and values. And undoubtedly, schools and our esteemed educators have a huge role to play. So I think these were a few important aspects that I wanted to highlight. I thank all of you for giving me a patient hearing. We have a great panel today, a wonderful panel. And I'm sure they'll touch upon this uh, this very important aspect and also share their real life experiences, etc., to enrich all of us. Over to you, Shubhaya. Thank you, Ashin. Thank you for that wonderful presentation. I think it sets the stage beautifully for the wonderful discussion that we have following. Well, ladies and gentlemen, as Ashin mentioned, we do have a wonderful panel lined up for you today. Before we take you to the panel discussion, a couple of minutes to talk about notebook. We at Notebook are an edtech organization. We make small videos tailored to every topic of the school curriculum. If you are teaching or leading a CBSE school, you would find topics right from class one through to class 12 for every subject of CBSE converted into a number of video lessons. Now these videos come in handy in two places. One is when you are taking your class, be it online or offline, you have access to these videos that you can start your class with that gives your students a more visual understanding of the chapter that is to follow. Much later, when the students have to prepare for their exams, they have access to these same videos from their personal devices. If they have a laptop or a smartphone at home, they can access the same videos that you have used in your class. And what this means is not only can they use the videos to revise the topic, they can also be reminded with a visual cue about what you had taught in class that very day. Given the topic that we have at hand today, and what Ochin mentioned earlier, we will take a quick look at one sample, a short snippet of one of the notebook videos, which talks about Gandhiji's emergence into the nationalist. At this stage, a new political leader, Mohandas Karamchand Gandhi, rose to prominence and suggested a new method of fighting the colonial rule. Gandhi began his career as a lawyer and rose to prominence while fighting racial oppression in South Africa. He returned to his country in 1915 to lead the Indian independence movement. Gandhi used a new method of fighting the racial government in South Africa known as the Satyagraha. The word Satyagraha comes from the word Satya, which means truth, and Agraha, which means holding fast. For his steadfast pursuance of the truth and his selfless devotion to the country, he was named the Mahatma by Rabindranath Tagore. Mahatma Gandhi believed that we should not hate the person committing the crime, but the crime itself. He believed that it was possible to bring about a positive change by appealing to the consciousness of the oppressor. A Satyagrahi could win the battle by using non-violence and following the path of truth. A Satyagrahi did not force the oppressor or any person to accept the truth. Rather, they convinced people to see the truth. In this way, the method of non-violence could unite all Indians. After arriving in India, Gandhi carried on three successful Satyagraha movements. In 1916, he carried on successful Satyagraha for the peasants of Champaran in Bihar, who were forced to grow indigo on their fields. In 1917, he carried on Satyagraha movement for the peasants of Kheda in Gujarat. There was a crop failure in Kheda, but instead of providing relief to the peasants, the government was forcing them to pay revenue. The Satyagraha movement forced the government to give revenue relaxation to peasants. Similarly, in 1918, Mahatma Gandhi organized Satyagraha movement for the cotton mill workers in Ahmedabad. They were suffering because of low wages and long working hours. 
all the three movements organized by the Mahatma achieved success. Well, that was just a short clip from one of the notebook videos. If you go on to our website, www.notebook.school, you would find more than 10,000 such videos at your disposal for you to teach with. Well, ladies and gentlemen, with that out of the way, it is now time for me to introduce the stellar panel that we have lined up for you today. We have with us, this is Divya Dibedi, who is the principal of the Unison World School. She has been serving school children for the last 28 years at the middle and senior school levels. With years of diverse experience in the field of girl child education, she has devoted more than 16 years in girls' boarding environment, thus bringing in a deep sense of passion for education and empowerment of the girl child. Mrs. Devedi started her career from her alma mater, St. Francis Convent High School, New Jersey. She has taught at the Wendy School, Little Angels, and Sindhya Kanya Vidyale while she was at Gwalior. She joined the prestigious Mayo College Girls School as vice principal, where she assisted staff members and students at problem solving and conflict resolution. As a keen learner, she honed her administrative and counseling skills. Her mission is to create future leaders by fostering an environment of curiosity, habit of critical thinking, and a culture of innovation. She strives to create an environment that empowers exploration of new strategies and techniques of education by incorporating the best of technology, experience, and discipline. She believes in the spirit of collaboration and seeks to inculcate that in each of her students. Mom, thank you so much for being here and making the time. We also have with us Mr. Sandeep De. Sandeep De is the principal of St. Thomas High School in Dhanbad. More than a decade, he has been involved in providing quality education with his team of young, dynamic, and enthusiastic teachers in an axle hit area of Jharkhand. He, along with his teachers, has been working with students from remote villages to upscale and upgrade them to compete with students in big cities and towns. With Sandeep's experience of being a corporate trainer and conducting leadership workshops with MNCs and organizations across the globe, he is also a certified NLP coach and certified trainer from CBSC. Having conducted many workshops and seminars on teaching techniques and behavioral trainings, Sandeep has shared and gained a rich experience with ICT skills. In the current days of lockdown and the schools being run virtually, Sandeep has been working very closely with school principals, directors, and teachers on working virtually with their students or stakeholders. Trainings that have been conducted so far by him have helped schools, colleges, and teachers in particular to equip enhance and develop their ICT skills so that the online classes are effective for the stakeholders. Apart from his academic endeavors, Sandeep also likes to play cricket, drive, and spend time with his sons at home. Being a botanist, MBA graduate, and his contribution to the education arena in India and abroad, he is optimistic that the current lockdown situation in online classes, virtual schools, is the going to be the new more normal for people connected to the education system in India. Sir, thank you so much for being here. And it's a privilege to host you today. We also have with us Mr. K.V. Arjun Rao, an education enthusiast, novelist, writer, visionary, is what describes Mr. Arjun Rao in the field of education. As the principal of JBC and International School, Oshiwara, Mr. Rao strives to encourage educators and learners to spread their wings and aim for the horizon. Mr. Rao brings with him nearly two decades of experience as an educator, having worked with some of the finest schools in the country, from the Doon School, Dehradun, to Oak Ridge International School in Bangalore, and later Hyderabad. Mr. Rao ensures that the teachers he works with are trained to develop inquisitiveness and curiosity in learners. The learner is asked to question, think, and analyze, and it is the duty of an educator as a mentor to foster critical thinking. He believes in an education that makes a learner learn, try, experience, and innovate, and it is his constant endeavor to bring the academic excellence and enriching experience to any institution he leads. He does so by nurturing talent, mindful of history, with an amalgamation of the present, thus reaching for a future as bright as the sun. And it is his ideologies that make him stand out as a brilliant educator, principal, and leader. Sir, privileged to have you with us. You were part of uh, this panel at the very beginning of this journey almost a year back, and it's a privilege to welcome you back. Well, I shall start my video now, stop the share, so that we can all see each other. And um, let me just arrange this a little bit better. Well, a good evening once again. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, before I get on to the specific questions that I have, I would like to go around the table once in case you have any opening statements because leadership is a topic that I'm sure you have extremely personal opinions about. Uh, Mr. Dey, if you may start with you. Uh, well, good evening to everyone. Thank you. 
Team Notebook for having me back again. Uh, for me, the statement which I would want to share with the panelists here is uh, I'm here today as a principal because I had seen my school principal uh, and the lady who had started a school way back in the late early 70s, uh, Julian Day School in Calcutta, uh, Mrs. Sheila Broughton. Uh, so I can probably call myself a proud uh, student of hers because whenever I had seen her, I had always wanted to be in her position someday. And I'm glad that today I'm running my own school and I'm also a principal. So I think leadership is something which is uh, there in us. It just has to be uh, followed and teachers play a very, very major role in bringing out the leadership qualities in students. So that would be my statement, uh, Shubayu, for the panelists and everyone who's attending this webinar today. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, Mrs. Devedi, Devedi if we may come across to you. Um, so I would say leadership is a culture that can be developed. And um, we, all of us here, um, educators, we have, uh, we are entrusted with that responsibility of uh, ensuring that uh, the future that uh, we have in our hands, we have the empowerment of creating the future. So the future that we uh, create is, uh, uh, we have leaders that we create in future. We have a nation which is uh, empowered with leaders. So that's the kind of uh, leadership uh, responsibility that we have on our shoulders. So we have to believe in ourselves to be able to create those leaders. Yeah. Wonderful, ma'am. Thank you so much. Uh, Mr. Rao, coming across to you. Hi, good evening. And good evening, uh, good evening to all my fellow panelists. Good to see you all. Um, leadership is lonely. Um, yes. Very often you keep your own counsel. Uh, very often, uh, you have to pick up the phone and the only people who will understand what you're going through are fellow heads that you end up speaking with. Um, my old headmaster, uh, Mr. Dev Lahiri, um, when I was in school, he used to say, you must have the courage of your own convictions. Courage it's uh, something that uh, uh, you know, stayed with me for a long time. Of course, when we were children, uh, it used to be one of those things that you hear your headmaster say over and over. Uh, but I think as you become an adult, uh, you realize that having convictions is easy, but standing up for them is a wholly different thing. Yes. Um, being a leader requires you to be brave, courageous, inspiring, ethical, and above all, uh, decisive. But uh, you always have to remember, uh, you are human. Don't take yourself too seriously. That would be my opening statement. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, regarding not taking yourself too seriously, I have read the book that you wrote, and I think uh, the sense of humor just comes across. It's a, it's a wonderful book. I would recommend that to anybody. Uh, Mr. Day, coming back to you, uh, my first question, when you're specifically teaching young students, what are those leadership traits or qualities that you're trying to teach them? Uh, well, Shubayu, I have, uh, just to answer that question, I have a short presentation which I would like to share with uh, everyone here. Uh, those are... Uh, there are five things which I've focused on. Uh, basically, leadership as a quality is an adjective of all the good qualities of a human being that you should have. Like uh, Mr. Rao said, uh, we are human at the end of the day and we cannot be perfect always. So it's, it's, it's our responsibility as, as teachers or as parents to probably inculcate these habits uh, in children so that, uh, like Mr. Burrett also said, uh, that in some field or some place or some part of our lives, we need to be leaders. So are we preparing our children today to be that kind of a leader? So if, if with your permission, if I may be able to share that presentation of mine. Yes, sir, please. So here we're talking about empower your child through the leadership skills that we're going to talk about. Uh, instill confidence so that the child or 
not only child, I, I would rather say that being a corporate trainer, we've been through a lot of corporate training for leaders and business leaders where we've spoken to people above 50 uh, and still ready to learn. And a child's brain is something which is always ready to learn and looks up to us as teachers and educators. So inspiring them to take decisions, uh, working together in teams is also a very crucial factor, especially in the last two years now uh, that we've been in this new normal, is where uh, I think every household nowadays has about four to five phones and children are using the phones not only for their studies online, however, for a lot of other things which is not supposed to be. And as parents, we are also busy on phones. So uh, there, there comes a, a question that if I am to lead by example, how am I supposed to do that when I have a phone in my hand uh, almost in the time that I'm away? So uh, these are some questions which we're going to talk about. So nurturing leadership in children is, uh, is a very, very interesting topic, which I am probably dealing with for the first time uh, because it's about children. Uh, as a educator for the last decade or so, uh, we've been, uh, people keep asking me, why did you switch from corporate training back to children? Well, my answer to them was very simple that uh, where people love to learn uh, is where I love to teach. And it's not only to teach, as a teacher, we also get to learn a lot of things on a daily basis. So, uh, what are the key leadership skills that we require for a child? So there are about six points which I have jotted down. First of all is as a leader, you need to be able to communicate very clearly and crisply with everyone. So uh, when it comes to students, uh, we have students who are average, who are below average, who are above average, who are over enthusiastic. However, the naughtiest children are the children who communicate really, really well in class. So uh, as a teacher, I think uh, inculcating communication through children is very important. Be it a child who's just started school or a child who's just about to leave school after class 12 and uh, who's in the teens, uh, has his own room or has her own set, up, set of friends whom they wish to communicate uh, is there. But the communication between family and friends has reduced. So what is the role uh, that as parents or as teachers we could play in uh, helping our children communicate to us what is their issues. Next is teaching them to motivate. I think uh, Achin, uh, Achin had discussed this about motivating. As, as a leader, you need to be motivating. So your child learns from you and hence motivation comes from you. So uh, a number of times we have seen that we, we've been able to uh, teach uh, children to motivate uh, in their small groups, uh, especially with the new education policy, which is going to be launched from 2022. Uh, there are a lot of activity-based learning which children will be coming up and facing. I think uh, motivation is something where we tell them or try to teach children how to keep themselves happy. Because if we have happier faces, uh, have happier uh, children in class, we have a happy class altogether. And the learning uh, turnout is also much, much better than a gloomy class. The next point that we have is about delegation. Uh, this also, I think uh, Mr. Buret or uh, Achin had discussed earlier. Uh, delegation is not a loss at the face of uh, leadership. In fact, delegation is not the sign of weakness. It is, in fact, it is the strength. A leader always knows the work that has to be done the best. And he or she knows how, whom to delegate. For example, I can just uh, share with you something which happened last year. Uh, in fact, this year, January, February, when we had the pre-boards in our school. And it was very difficult to get in touch with children because of the lockdown, especially in our area, where only about 60% of the students were able to connect through the online classes. But the pre-board examinations were important. So I, I decided that I will have a group of students who were well connected with the rest of the uh, batch, batch mates. Through them, through a word of mouth, we spread the news for the pre-board examination and all 622 students of our class 10 students were able to attend the pre-board examinations, of course, under 
controlled conditions in the school so that was uh, if if i thought that no it is me as a principal who has to communicate uh, with students who were not able to connect online we still had these 622 students come across just through a word of mouth through the different groups that we that were created not on whatsapp not virtually but in fact over a phone call over a message which was sent across to their villages or their panchayat mukhyas or anybody like that so delegation is an important criteria i think a leader should have creativity to think out of the box is something which anyone and everyone has sometimes we tend to stop uh, children from doing their way of things of or, or answering different kind of questions or issues but how many years are we going to be with these children max to max 12 to 14 years uh, like uh, like uh, mr rao also said he remembers what his headmaster said i remember what my headmaster said that went on with us for quite some time but we also could analyze as adults as to why was those things or those lines said to us time in and time again so creativity is something which is it's almost like necessity is the mother of all inventions so creativity uh, and and there can be nobody else more creative than a child we we are more directed towards a particular uh, way of working because now we are adults we tend to think that no we know this we we are graduates post graduates doctorates so we've seen the world so we can do it but trust me i think all of our panelists and everybody listening to this webinar today would agree that a child can beat us hands down when it comes to creativity on uh, getting a solution to any issues that we face so we need to respect that uh, creativity in a child and we just need to guide them as 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 a coach as a mentor uh, so that they are able to use this creativity in a more positive direction that that i think is a crucial role of a teacher or a parent here fifth a positive persona uh, positivity always attracts more positiveness uh, people around uh, uh, who have been there with positive people always feel very happy hap uh, they feel good and they can do things and they they don't usually tend to uh, look up uh, into the negative issues of it uh just to give you an example uh, there's a game which we play uh, at home with children uh, it's called the lego blocks even at our ages today if we are given lego blocks we will not be subtracting anything in fact if let alone with the lego blocks for about 5 minutes i think each one of us will try to build something new uh, why because as the human brain is uh, metered in such a way that we tend to add things rather than subtract things so that is what i'm trying to say here is that positive persona of a leader is very very crucial that's why a smiling teacher uh, no matter what the situation is the smile on my teacher's face made my day every day Uh, even if i got the poorest of marks she would just look at me smile and say never mind child there's another day again so i won't be judging you only on one test of 10 marks or 20 marks so that smile or that positivity created my day as well uh, and i'm sure uh, i have been doing uh, that for many of my students and i'm sure they will also do the same when they meet their friends and the sixth one is being trustworthy i think as a leader uh in today's question like in the democratic world also uh, who is the trustworthy leader uh, whom can we trust we go for our uh, constitutional rights of voting and everything we have this question in our mind is he or she trustworthy so is uh, the leader that we are talking about here the child that we are talking about here are we giving him such qualities that he or she can be a trustworthy person in the society number 1 can be a trustworthy person within his class his or her class uh also let's see if the trust factor creates an impact of the person in the society also or not so these are the six things that we are talking about here the leadership skills which i feel are important uh for a person for a child for a teacher i think this is also applicable to adults as well 
Yes. So just try to uh, twist and turn a little bit here, trying to motivate, uh, trying to uh, trying to create this in a way where we can also see that we as teachers can inculcate these six things uh, amongst our students so that they also can start learning a lot earlier. So why is it important to have control in over one's life, have ability, obvious answers? So five tips that I have to share here are teach the children how to respect because this is something which we at, at home or as at school, the way we talk to each other, the way we greet each other uh, is something that a child does not know. We need to teach them the difference between the good and the bad. The, the way the behavior, uh, what is a good behavior, what is a bad behavior, the etiquette that we talk about. So these things help uh, a leader. So teaching how to respect is one of the first uh, foremost things which I think a leader should always have. Teaching problem solving and perseverance. As children, uh, when we start how to walk uh, as toddlers, uh, there are a number of times that parents are there right beside us to help us, to guide us. Uh, but that is a problem. When should I start, stand up, start walking? Uh, perseverance is what we see even in a six-month-old child who's trying to just learn how to walk or balance him or herself. So that is something which I think as parents, we need to give out more time uh, with our children. We, we are now very, very low on patience. There are a lot of pressures on our head about uh, the job pressures, uh, the salaries and everything. Uh, as teachers, in fact, uh, I had a lot of many of our teachers come back to us and say, sir, I can take care of my classes, but I cannot take care of my own child. I tend to lose patience. I tend to uh, raise my hands on my child. I probably somewhere or the other, we have uh, lost patience on our own children. And as teachers, when we are trying to uh, create that patience amongst parents and students who are connecting with us online, I think that is something where we all need to work, really, really work on and consciously work on. Perseverance that, no, things might be different. You can do it differently, but we will be able to solve the problem or we will be able to win one day, not today, but tomorrow for sure. So the third point is peace through positive reinforcements. Try and see if we have any such instances in the past where we can give an example to a student. Um, I would like to quote Harsha Bhogli here in one of the IIM uh, convocations when she was there. He, uh, he asked this question to the entire uh, group. Uh, can you say, uh, I'm a good cricketer myself. I left uh, my IES job because I, for the love of cricket. But the way Sachin Tendulkar loves cricket and I love cricket are two different things. So, uh, and do you know what is the difference? So the obvious difference was that a Sachin Tendulkar could perform day in, day out because of his hard work and through his practice, which he did. Whereas a Harsha Bhogle was a fan of cricket. He loved cricket. He could play cricket, but he did not probably love the game the way a Sachin Tendulkar does. So these are things which are positive reinforcements. A player, a cricketer, for example. Uh, I don't think Gary Kirsten had to ever teach Sachin Tendulkar how to bat when he was the coach of the Indian cricket team and it won the World Cup in 2011. Uh, neither of the uh, players required any coaching as such, but they required a mentor, a person who would stand by them, who could uh, be there with them at the time when they were uh, down and low. So teach through positive reinforcements. Think about the positive things that your kids have done at home or probably baked a wonderful cake and the next day the cookie got burned. So these things keep happening, but remind them of that beautiful sponge cake that they came up with. Uh, teach creativity. Tease them. Okay, this is how it is. Uh, this is what you have to... Uh, you have a piece of bread. Now you make it creative and make your own breakfast. It's as simple as that. But not as simple as, like I just said it, because creativity, as parents also we need to be, as teachers also we need to be creative. We were the creative best 
when we started with our online classes last year i think all schools all teachers all principals everybody was like oh wow we can do this also we never knew this okay google drive has these things great so we were also learning and we were also being creative we were trying to make uh, we were trying to compare just like the video which um, i think shubhayu just showed us the way the girl was talking the confidence in her voice the way that she was conducting the classes as a teacher when i saw those things i said why can't i probably do something like that why can't i have a screen in the background so those are things which created and this creativity also gave rise to me asking different questions so when i started asking questions i got to learn more i got to learn about the green screen then i knew how uh, probably katappa was made and how that movie was made the green screen and all these things so technic uh, technologically also we as teachers learned a lot of things in the last year which is a very very uh, big boom uh, a boon which was there given to us last year through the covid and finally teach independence so that our children can work in teams uh, independence why let them be they will make mistakes it's okay through mistakes we learn we learn better and we learn faster till the time we um, i i had made this mistake with my son uh, when the online classes started the initial few months i used to write in his notebooks so that he could complete his assignments on time a lot of parents did that i'm sure uh, just to make sure that the child would get good marks or was able to complete his studies online but in 2 3 months time i realized that my child was becoming duller and he was used to the fact that my father would do or complete my work because of which things were coming easier to him and while he had group discussions in his class he was not able to uh, respond the way he would respond earlier so independence is something which has to be given to children uh, so that they can be creative they can learn through their mistakes and they can also solve problems or come to solutions so these are the five things which uh, five points which i had and every child is a potential leader even if they were not leaders they might they may be taught to become one by their teachers and and their role models their parents teachers and their role models so learning is a never ending thing and leadership can be a part of our life even while we go and bargain for uh, the fish that we would want to buy tomorrow so that that is also where we talk about negotiation and leadership skills so it comes in handy everywhere so thank you very much for the patient hearing that all of you gave me uh, i'll be open to questions uh, but i'm sure i'll hand over uh, this presentation to shubhayu now uh, shubhayu thank you so much sir thank you uh, for the indeed a very wonderful presentation mr rao if you may come across to you sir uh, we've seen quite a few leadership traits that we have discussed in your case uh, sir what are the specific traits that you uh, talk to your students about well i think um, you know if you are uh, working on uh, models and programs that will allow you to instill uh, leadership in learners i think it becomes really important to keep in mind the fact that uh, they are going to go through the gamut of um, every opportunity that you give them and they will lap it up um, i think children by just sheer definition love learning and so any sort of opportunity that they receive is one in which they will learn extraordinary things um you will see certain natural things happen so yes uh while leadership as mr bird mentioned i am a big believer in that uh while leadership and every single trait contained uh can be learned i think it becomes the responsibility of adults to be able to create those opportunities and choreograph those moments in which that leadership um can be honed and discovered um there are uh, you know different elements uh that will allow learners the opportunity to exercise that leadership um you could be given the charge of a particular academic project 
Uh, you could be given the charge of a school team. You could be made as, uh, you know, was mentioned earlier, a student leader, you know, a prefect or a captain or one of those things. And so, you know, there are different um, elements that I think schools have built into their systems to be able to ensure those opportunities come through. I think one thing that a lot of schools don't do, and I think that um, we should do, is inculcating responsibility in those positions and uh, for those roles that we create. Um, I think it's a little more adaptable and obvious in academic systems. Uh, so, you know, if you if you are in charge of an academic project, um, you know, you are always going to be judged on uh, the performance in that in that role. Uh, but there are things that, uh, you know, we don't really hold children accountable for. And I think it's really important for any student leader to go through a process of appraisal just like adults do. I think it's great training for life. It happens to everybody the minute you enter the workplace. Um, and I think it's really important that they have these periodic reviews and that adults in these positions take out that time to be able to give them that feedback. These are children at the end of the day, however tall they might be and however confident they sound, they are children and they need that guidance uh, from adults continuously. I think also it is very, very important for them to be uh, taken away from the temptations that come with the trappings of leadership. You know, everyone wants to wear the uniform. Uh, everyone wants to be the one in the school photographs. Everyone wants to meet the chief guest. Uh, but when all that is done, uh, there is hours and hour, there are hours and hours of hard work to be put in. And most leaders you'll find struggle with that. There is also the terribly mundane work that comes with being a leader. Uh, you know, most leaders uh, in, in life, uh, you know, you'll see, uh, yes, there, there are the speeches and the bonuses and the award ceremonies and the photographs. But most of the time it is, uh, you know, hours and hours of strategizing, sitting in a room with a bunch of other people, uh, trying to figure out what we're going to do, uh, trying to problem solve things that, you know, uh, never come into the fore, while at the same time, you're trying to do a hundred other things. Uh, you know, I think this last year has been an extraordinary learning for me um, to be able to think of, uh, and I, honestly, uh, there are people who've been doing it for far, far longer, uh, but to be able to think of, uh, you know, where vegetables are going to come from at the same time when you're trying to figure out um, how a math class is going to be taught in the most imaginative way um, is, is a tough one to, to balance. And I think we must really let our uh, in, introduce our children to the idea that um, leadership can be seen all around you. You don't have to look up at pedestals to find leaders yes. all the time. Uh, you will see them at home most of the time. You'll see them on the school bus. You'll see security guards in school. You'll see your teachers. You'll even see your friends who are taking these decisions every day, complex and otherwise. And I think it's important for learners to be introduced to the idea that they can visualize it and find opportunities all around them. So yes, I think it's very important to train them, to teach them, to coach them, to mentor them. But it's also really important to give them a realistic picture of what leadership is all about. Wonderful, sir. Thank you so much. I do have some questions for you, but I'll come back to you with that in a bit. Uh, Mrs. Divedi, if I may come to you with the same question. Uh, primary leadership traits that you're teaching your students. Um, so leadership, like it has already been said across the forum, um, it comes through a lot of activities and putting uh, the pin of responsibility onto the child by way of being a prefect or a captain or a, a leader of that particular club. And uh, that said, um, the child would then to execute, to be able to execute his responsibility, he will depict the requisite skill set or he will uh, hone to acquire the requisite skill set of uh, um, being an effective communicator, to be able to be a team player so as to uh, get his requisite work done in that um, assigned task. Like, um, 
the success of a leader is the success of the team. It's never a, a singular success. Together, they all win. Um, so we got to empower those leaders which will come with, again, they have to be hurled with the typical challenges and um, so that they are able to think critically, they look at the trends and they look at the projections um, and they are able to forecast uh, what could this be. Um, so leadership is all about, you know, um, handling disruptions because they have to uh, manage the unforeseen something that something that has uh, something like that has come about now we never knew what was going to hit us till we were hit by the pandemic and how to deal with it so equally uh, challenging is the future for our children who do not know where they are uh, headed towards and uh, it's such a hookah world that uh, you know you we have to be preparing them so as to be able to think for that out of the box uh, thinking and uh, be able to solve those problems which they haven't seen as yet. So uh, I think uh, Mr. Bharat had made a mention of uh, the Model United Nations as an activity. And um, yeah, I'm um, a, a, a big, big promoter for that because uh, like the way the world is um, headed towards complex problems, multiple problems all at the same time, like Mr. Rao was also making a mention just now of uh, where to get the vegetables and how to deal with the mathematics class and all those things all at the same time. Yeah, and when you give this kind of a complex problem to the child, he comes up with innovative solutions and uh, the global, uh, the polar ice melt, uh, ice cap melting and um, um, you know, war in Rwanda or uh, how things were managed in the past. All these problems, when you put across to children, they are able to think better, better than the ones who had actually faced it. And they are able to come out with innovative solutions to these and simple solutions at that. Because, you know, we never thought like that. And it is the children who are able to give us those solutions because they have not been tempered with the do's and the don'ts. They haven't been tempered with, okay, it can only happen in this certain manner. You have let them be. You can, so this is the kind of um, leadership that we want to see in the world in the future. So we will have to be empowering these children and we will have to, you know, stop doing things the way we had been doing all this while. We will have to be those change um, that we want to see in the world. And we will have to enable our future leaders so as to um, bring about that change that we want to see. And I would say like te we teachers are um, something like what Kautilya was in 324 BC when he just identified his student and uh, a, a simple boy whom he created and converted into um, Chandragupta Maurya and uh, who later on uh, laid down the great Mauryan empire for the whole world to see. So um, I would like us teachers to be those king makers, to uh, be able to ensure that the children that we are dealing with are uh, uh, future leaders for the world. The way we will treat them is the way uh, they will grow. If they live with criticism, they learn to condemn. If they live with fear, they learn to be apprehensive. If they live with encouragement, they learn to be confident. If they live with praise, they learn how to appreciate. If they live with approval, uh, and a recognition, they'll learn to become better people. If they learn, live with honesty and fairness, they'll know what justice is. So this is what we are looking at. And yes, of course, um, the basic traits that we're looking at for the future generation is uh, the um, four Cs, ra rather the five Cs, like Mr. Day was already making a mention of. 
um, the uh, effective communication, better collaboration, critical thinking skills, um, creativity and complex problem solving. Um, but at the same time, these children should have that requisite patience, that self-belief like uh, Mr. Rao was making a mention. No, I think Mr. Mattacharya ji had made a mention of uh, courage of conviction they should have. And that persistence and commitment to the self, you know? Um, so that is how we will be educating our future leaders. Then there was this um, uh, confidence that needs to be instilled. And uh, the sense of service, like Mr. Barrett was uh, making a mention of. Um, and yes, they got to keep on going doggedly at it. Committed persistence has to happen. And that's what uh, we're going to be able to achieve this. Uh, look at the question of uh, whether one person leads and other fo others follow. And I would uh, uh, like to go with Mr. Barrett, as, even if there's no follower, one's got to lead oneself, you know? Um, and here I would say, I would like to give you an example of uh, um, the housewives whom we do not treat as uh, of any or much consequence. And leading this disruption of uh, the COVID pandemic, how they came out. Um, and uh, several of these housewives came out and they coupled their little endeavors of being able to cook for um, uh, the jobless, the homeless, the displaced. And they, uh, the idea got scaled up. And they, through this effort, they managed to feed lakhs and lakhs of uh, factory workers all across the country. Now, who would have thought that these are leaders? But they are. Because uh, at the end of the day, it, leadership is all about making that social influence or uh, about that impact that, you know, you can make. And um, rightly put that even every common man is a leader in his own right, be it the school bus conductor or uh, uh, the guard at the gate. So they lead by example and uh, the children are got to, they are got to follow by observation. And they are great observers, they're keen learners. And uh, yeah, so we are looking at not just a crop of students who have to be mindlessly uh, cultivated into the next generation leaders. But what needs to be done here is with a lot of love and care and affection, these leaders need to be given their due credit. And it's, it's sort of to be cultivated like the garden that, uh, you know, each and every um, talent gets honed in the way it is required to be. So, uh, so that we, we get a garden flourishing of leaders of, in their own right, in their own respective spheres of life. Yeah. Thank you so much, ma'am. Uh, if, if I could also ask you, ma'am, given that you have typically worked mostly in girls' schools, and uh, be that as it may, we, we might not want it that way, but a lot of these women would enter their careers in a still gender-biased world. Right? Yes. In that case, do you tell them something specifically, uh, an extra bit of advice if they are going to be women leaders? Well, not really, because uh, out there it is, uh, it is a, a gender blind world, be it men or women, uh, they got to um, challenge themselves and, uh, you know, lead by sheer dint of their merit. Now, the advantage that they get out in an all girls environment is that uh, there's no one to help them out. Okay, uh, this bag is heavy, I will lift it for you. No one does that. It may be heavy, but you got to lift your own bags. There is, uh, so there is no uh, shying away from doing the tough work because there's no one else coming to do it for you. 
and at the same time there is no competition okay you let it be this is uh, this is not a girl's job so this is the kind of uh, upbringing that we give to our girls when it comes to an all girls environment and uh, that that readies them to face the outside world um you know which doesn't make any distinction there are no longer any lines in the on the platform okay this is a female line this is a male line it's a single line it's a gender blind environment out there you got to lean into make your space wonderful ma'am uh, mr rao if i may come back to you uh, sir you used to teach theater if i'm not mistaken and uh, i have had a little bit of experience with theater especially at the school and college level and it has always struck me as a phenomenal tool if you are teaching leadership to somebody there's there's so much of scope i suggest your views on this one aspect of theater as a tool sure um well i think uh, you know it allows you the uh, one is of course in in um, you know the creation of roles themselves uh you know there there are so many plays uh, that are set in historical examples um and you have so much that can be learned from just the sheer reading of those characters hearing them speak hearing their voice hearing what uh, and by also placing them in the historical context in which they were working and functioning um i also believe that uh, uh that is one element of it the the whole academic appreciation of a uh, uh, piece of theater or a play itself i think then there is uh, in the production of uh, of such a uh, play uh, you have uh, you know the opportunities to be able to learn and grow and, and uh, discover so many things about a production uh, by being a director and actor uh, designing sound designing costumes uh, doing makeup uh, those are decisions that uh, children themselves take uh, you know and i think uh, you know in all of our schools we will have ample opportunities for children to use theater by plays written by them directed by them you know whatever edited performed by them to be able to allow them uh, that scope uh but i think what it also does is um, allows individuals momentarily to find themselves placed in the minds of these um great men and women of the past and i think uh, whether they are fictional characters or historical ones i think the molding of any such character is very very critical because i think most elements of theater and if you've been very acutely involved that this happens with i mean i'm sure everyone remembers school productions from their own days uh, and of course you speak to children who are quite heavily involved in theater uh, they will always tell you about uh, how so many of the of the traits of characters that they've played or they've experienced or they've thought of um, have stayed with them after productions have ended as well so i think yes certainly it is uh, it is a space in which there can be so much that can be done uh, to be able to enhance uh, elements of leadership in children wonderful sir uh, i'll just because of paucity of time come to the last question that i had in uh, for this panel uh, mr day i'll come to you first you being the technocrat on this panel uh, sir social media is something that children are on today we cannot stop it from happening they sign up ticking a check box saying i'm 18 years and above but the fact is they're not and uh, they are exposed to a tremendous world of conformism right unless you conform to a world ideal that is shared by others in your segment you are ostracized you are called out you are trolled uh, in this kind of environment how do you teach leadership skills uh well shubhayu this is a problem which i think is also present in my house at the very current moment while i'm speaking to you uh, i also have an example of a uh, friend of mine whose elder son is preparing for his ias examinations and that boy does not use any android phone or any phone which helps him connect to the uh, the social networking sites or anything of that sort so that is something called as discipline but as far as i am concerned as a parent i would like to answer this question as a parent not as a panelist uh, i think a little bit of control is required a little bit of involvement of parents is required here uh, otherwise why would a child who was not born with a phone go back to a phone 
because he or she is either watching his parents or her parents at home using the phone all the time or the easier way to communicate is through a whatsapp or through the social media networking sites where parents being excited about being on instagram or linkedin or or whatsapp so immediately you'll find your child also having an instagram account where he or she is not allowed to so i think this is where parental guidance is required uh, there is no rule i think there are rules of course but uh, to be honest i think spending time with your kids especially during this lockdown when you cannot be running around outside uh, would also help them give them specific times like i i remember most of us through our childhood we had a specific time to get back home um after evening uh, uh, games or whatever so we knew that we were supposed to be back home by 6:30 latest wash up have your snacks or whatever and sit down for your studies and that was done in each and every household and that time there was probably most of the places we had only those western shutter tvs which were there but we followed a routine Uh, so these are things which we we can probably share with our kids also that see at your age we were probably doing this so they would call us out of uh, the system or out of the time and as far as if the phone is not there being bullied online or by friends i don't think that is going to be an issue uh, till the time your child is not very aware of uh, what is the word bullying means if you're not on a particular social uh, networking site so i think parenting here plays a crucial role according to me thank you sir uh, mrs devendi if i may come across to you with the same question obviously a boarding school i'm guessing it's a little easier than uh, perhaps a day boarding school am i your mute um yeah i agree to a certain extent with what mr day did say uh about disciplining your child that is that is in itself and yes you were right uh, it's much easier uh in a boarding school where all these gadgets are not permitted but that said um i fail to understand why are we threatened um with this whole um uh, thing it's it's like the challenge of conformism and it's that challenge of uh, the child uh, uh being on the social media why are we not leading by example like uh, mr day already said so uh it is very difficult to take the child off the social media and uh, yet we are uh, continuously on social media so that said why don't we turn it into an opportunity and give them a sense of direction to leverage this social media and these platforms and give them um an inspiration to take it forward in a manner which is beneficial for them like let's say uh, give them a sense of purpose around um environment we can leverage because right now the classes are going online and we adults have given the the children the uh, the gadgets and then we are cribbing about oh this is what the child is doing he's more on instagram okay so so beat it give them a a, a task around instagram so as to create a uh, learning so that the child does maybe some research find out with your peers how many of them um use more plastic um you know anything any any uh, task we can give them how much of electricity they consume in the day how much of plastic and reusable plastic they use or do not use so things like this we can give them as tasks and assignments and gather i mean turn a threat into an opportunity is what i'm trying to say over here and uh, it is good the child has learned how to uh, contain or limit himself in those many words word limits that is there on maybe instagram or convert a uh, uh, an ins- instagram uh, challenge into a positive challenge things like that can be looked at um they can look towards making a career in um, social media optimizing or maybe creating um, apps like it is very much an uh, in thing these days you know um creating 
your uh, app based um, business that can be done so it's like it's going towards the future you cannot do away with these gadgets at all so it's it's a better thing to convert it from a threat into an opportunity because sooner or later they would come across and they would grow up uh, and grow over these uh, if if there is any threat from social media i would say thank you ma'am uh, that's that's a very interesting take from controlling access to leveraging access uh, mr rao if i can come to you with the same question sir you know if i'm perfectly honest uh, shwe you i don't think uh, this notion of conformity among peers and especially children is something that was born out of social media uh, you know if you look at schools for the last as long as schools have been around um all unique perspectives and this is i think in society as well um all unique perspectives are initially derided are looked at with great suspicion um a child who wears a different colored jacket is teased uh, somebody who wears a different kind of watch uh, you know today we are talking about social media i remember when i joined boarding school back you know 100 years ago um i was asked to leave the class because i came in with a ballpoint pen and it was not a fountain ink pen um but that's what my i mean for my teacher imagine that was such a big thing that i was asked to leave the class because i came in with a ballpoint pen um you know i'm i'm in a i think we're in a world where it is incumbent on us as educators and as adults to help learners understand the importance of technology in their lives um i believe that there is tremendous opportunity in every element of technology for every um uh, facebook group or instagram group or handle or twitter or whatever that exists out there that um, you know uh, does not allow individuals to find that space in which they can find safety and success and growth and so on uh, there are millions of opportunities that are out there that allow them to do that and i think this last one year has taught me that uh, it has taught me that uh, anybody can build a very very successful business um, of a, a social media platform you need a phone number and a handle and that's it yeah. um yeah. you know i am awaiting while we are doing this donuts that are going to be delivered to my house from the other side of mumbai yes. um and i have no idea who this person is i've never seen their face um i received a forward with a phone number and that person is sending me a box of homemade donuts to have this evening um i think the world has changed tremendously um i am i'm i'm seeing children who are engaging like ms devedi said just now about uh, questions about the environment they're talking about learning i have students who once the lockdown uh, came into play not only were they attending their own classes but as part of a large uh, portion of the community service that we do we educate children in the neighborhood as well um you know on on the pavement outside our school there's a big program that we run there none of those children could come right um and so these children that i know they uh, organized a drive to collect old cell phones and laptops from people in the neighborhood uh they had them delivered to these individual children's homes or at least if they were siblings or in a small neighborhood they had something set up and these children are continuing to run those classes every day they raised money to pay for those internet uh, for the for the internet in that area of on that device to ensure that even this child's own learning does not stop they did it entirely on whatsapp instagram facebook well facebook is passe for these children so it was almost entirely on whatsapp and facebook on and instagram, instagram. now you know look look at look at the power of what they're trying to accomplish and what they have accomplished you know so i think there is great opportunity i believe we as adults must encourage them to embrace it but they must also understand that with everything that there is there is danger lurking out there they have to be careful they have to be sensible and as long as 
they are open and sharing with the adults in their lives, in their inner safe circle, I believe things will be absolutely fine. And the future is very, very bright. Yeah. Thank you, sir. And on that wonderfully optimistic note, uh, we will have to close the discussion here. This has been absolutely fantastic. Wish we could go on for hours now. Uh, I will let Ochin do the formal thanking bit, but it's been an absolute privilege hosting you. Ochin, over to you for the word of thanks. So I think uh, really great session, a very wonderful session. And uh, I'll say a similar, similar discussion and some uh, very nice points that came across as a very thought provoking session. I think is a more appropriate to discuss, uh, discuss, you know, kind of describe today's session. But sir, uh, thank you as always for giving us a great start. And I think uh, uh, what you really told us about your uh, and out of uh, numerous examples and uh, uh, things that you mentioned, one thing that really stays with me is uh, when you were mentioning about uh, you know uh, Dune alumni and about uh, the gentleman who came back uh, donated a hefty sum. And when you were asking him about you know his his take on on this particular subject, so I think two aspects you mentioned. One was chasing excellence and second is putting others before self. I think that sums it up really well. Very, very important points. Thank you indeed, sir. Uh, Mr. Arjun Rao, thank you, sir. Thank you so much for your time. And some great points you mentioned, I must appreciate. Uh, starting with the fact, I think uh, very, very good opening remark when you said leadership is lonely, couldn't agree with you more on that. Completely, I completely agree with you on that. Uh, also, the fact that uh, I think some other uh, very nice aspects you mentioned. So I really like uh, you know uh, the, the the discussion about theaters, about historical examples, context, and how it really helps in terms of in terms of developing a student and nurturing those qualities. Thus, undoubtedly, training, coaching, mentoring, and I think another very important aspect you mentioned is uh, giving the realistic picture. So I completely agree with you that periodic review and guidance from adults and also it's responsibility of adults to actually devote that amount of time and ensure that they're able to give constructive, positive feedback to a child, which really helps him or her. Great point, indeed. Uh, thank you so much. Divya, ma'am. Uh, again, uh, some very good points you mentioned, ma'am. Starting with, I think, uh, critical thinking and forecasts that you highlighted on. Uh, handling disruption, undoubtedly, I think uh, that is very important. And considering today's time, you know, we couldn't agree more. Handling disruption, handling the unseen, uh, it's really leadership is about being able to take decisions. And at times, you know, the reality is at times while taking those decisions, at times, you know, uh, and decisions on the go with limited information and with some assumptions, Undoubtedly, that makes it far more challenging, but that's how the world operates in, in, in real life scenario. And also aspects that you mentioned about uh, multitasking and enabling future leaders. I agree with you when you say, when you, when you told us that the change that we want to see, you know, so undoubtedly what we want to see, we need to enable our future leaders and our esteemed educators as, as you know, mentors, as kingmaker have a huge role to play, no doubt about it. I thank you indeed, ma'am. Mr. Day, sir, again, some, some very good points. I think the Harsha Bhogli example really stays with us. And also your, your presentation, some uh, very good points. I think you, you summed it up very well, you know, uh, really helped set the stage. Uh, and also uh, uh, some, some realistic tips that you gave with regard to, you know, uh, uh, parenting in today's age, real challenges, etc. I think we all agree with you on that. Uh, some, some very good points. I also thank members of the esteemed audience for their time today and for being with us here. Uh, we, indeed, with your support, we have been able to take together for education webinar from strength to strength. And I look forward to your continued support in the days to come. Thank you. Take care and stay safe. Goodbye. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.